YouTube. B Smokehouse back here with you. Let me show what we got going on today. Today we're gonna make an all an all beef wiener, right? Traditionally, you don't really see people making wieners anymore. However, I can tell you, um, this wiener is gonna be full of flavor and it's probably going to be better than anything you can buy from your big box stores or your local grocery stores. Let's show you the ingredients we have. We have about um, four grams of ground mustard. We got four grams of ground ginger. We got about uh, five grams of white pepper we've got um, I think this was about one teaspoon of curing salt that's based on how much meat you're gonna have that's pink curing salt we'll get back to this in a little bit we've got about two grams of cayenne pepper we've got about um, I think this was about six grams of cardamom six grams of coriander we've got about um, I think it's five grams of smoked paprika and some ground nutmeg I substituted in ground nutmeg because I wasn't able to find any mace mace is Mace can be described as the sister of ground nutmeg. Um, I just couldn't find it. And then, well, black pepper to taste. Now, the base of this dish, of course, would be the curing salt and the uh, kosher salt. This is going to be six grams of kosher salt. I've all I've measured these on a scale that I have. Let me show you what I have. Scale. We use scales because this is a bit more accurate than your cup measurements. That's why we use this. I've got my casings. These are the cases I'm going to use. All right, it's going to be an all beef, all beef uh, wiener. This is about 5.78 pounds, so let's call it six pounds. This is what all my measurements of these were taken off of. The worst thing you can do is not measure, especially as it concerns salt. This is really what you should be measuring. This, as well as this, it's curing salt. You don't use too much of this. Um, however, the salty flavor still you're going to um, get it from this. Also, this lends a bit of saltiness, so that's why we don't go crazy with both salts. Now. Why do we use curing salt? That those nasty terms that can pop up, those bacteria um, that can pop up and make us sick. The one right off the top of my head is botulism. This stops this. So why do we use pink curing salt? Well, to stop botulism and for those meats that we're going to uh, cold smoke and leave in a danger zone purposely. The danger zone being the temperatures where things are known to grow. This stops that, all right? Um, sausage making, I mean, you, you'll see this used in making hams, making pastrami. I'll have another video with pastrami coming up here soon. Um, this is, I do it every once in a while, but that pink color, that red color you get on the inside of that brisket or something that you're turning to pastrami because it doesn't just have to be brisket. This is where it comes from. So now let me show you, I'm going to put this camera down and show you what we're going to do. And, um, other than that, guys, you probably haven't seen this done on camera. Some of my favorite, uh, YouTubers have, have done this before. Let me show you what we're going to do. Nothing too hard. Um, and I'm going to show you you can do this too. I'm debating whether I'm going to make this a two-day process. Um, we're going to hype those flavors up. And you can do that by leaving um, this cut-up meat um, with the seasonings on it in your fridge overnight. As those flavors hydrate, then that's how we establish a great tasting wiener. It's no different than what we would do for sausage. But however, you'll see on the breakdown of the meat, we're going to take it a little bit further. Stay tuned. We're going to break this down. Just remember, when you're doing this, all your measurements for your seasonings is based off the weight of the meat. All right? It is based off the weight of the meat. That is something very important to remember. If you don't remember it, then that is how you get something that's way too salty for human consumption. All right? So here's what we're going to do for this. Are we going to set this in here for now? I've got a pan over here. I've got a pan over here that I'm going to use to put my cut up meats in. So we're going to get some strips going. So this is an easier way just to make sure that every piece of meat that we're going to use is seasoned. And we do that by cutting strips and then cutting it into chunks. Um, the chunks also ensure that when I feed these through my grinder, that the grinder gets a good bite on them and grinds them up all the way. The, one of the main differences when I'm making wieners the difference in the breakdown of the meat is I'm taking this way past the grind I would to make regular sausage. Um, we're pretty much getting an emulsion going, which is also another reason I don't necessarily care about the fat content on this beef for making wieners. Now, you can have too much fat in your wiener and that will break the emulsion. 
really that's all a wiener is. It's an emulsion. And you'll see what I mean when I start mixing this. Some people actually use a mixer um, because you want, you know, a, a sausage is a bind. We're going to take this way past that initial bind, the primary bind. Um, we're going to take it way past that and it's going to look like really <laughs> meat paste. You know, so, you know, it's not, it's not a, a, a you know, for most people that's never seen meat process, it can be quite a time. Um, we are used to items such as bologna and uh, wieners, right? I grew up eating them. I was told, and I've done my own research on this, I was told that these items are made with the items that from beef, especially items from pigs and beef that um, the butchers can find nothing else to do with. So why would we make our own sausage? Well, for one, knowing that um, I'm sorry, wieners. Knowing that wieners are made from, I guess what most would call trash cuts, we like to know what's going in to our own wieners. Um, so you can, I'm not going to really cut any of this fat off. This is all going into the grind. So really, by making your own, you know what's going into the grind. You know what's going into your wieners. Now, that pink salt also will help this last a bit longer, but to get the max life out of these wieners, you can also freeze them. I've had I have a uh, I have a uh, a uh, uh, pressurization device, um, and it sucks all the air out of my plastic packaging, and that ensures a longer life frame on something like this. But let me finish breaking the rest of this meat down, and uh, we're gonna get to it now. I think that should be big enough for my grinder. Really, the cut on this is really just making sure it can fit into my grinder. Um, you know, cut that in half. You may see, even in some big chain operations that make sausages and make wieners, again, you may see people using a, mix, a mixer. And I'm talking like a KitchenAid, right? We, I told you guys, we're going to go past that primary bind on these uh, wieners. We need to make sure that because I don't want to no one really likes a coarse wiener right we like some people like coarse sausages but again we're taking this past sausage making territory the principles are pretty much still the same however one of the things you won't see me doing I like the fat that's on these I'm not going to manipulate I'm not going to put any more fat with this meat now if I was making sausages then uh, most assuredly you would see me I've got pork fat left over you would more than likely see me adjust the fat ratio on this I'm going about I would say an 80, I'm sorry, 90, 10, 90% 90 meat, 10% fat, or even 85% meat to the rest fat. You don't need a lot of fat here because um, if you do more fat, that fat in the end might end up breaking your emulsion, right? You'll see that. That's a part of uh, the wiener making process. Um, that's probably the part that's gonna, most people are gonna tune out on. All right, so stay tuned, I'll be back. All right, here's what we got doing so far. We're gonna move this out of the way. We no longer need this. I don't need these casings right now. All right, so now we're gonna go in with all our seasonings and I'm gonna get my hands in there and mix this. So we, I like to go with salt. I might not use all the salt. But the last thing I wanna do is do all this hard work and then this comes out too salty. I'm gonna leave it like that, maybe just a little bit. All right, okay. Then I'm gonna go in with the rest of my other items. There's the mustard. There's the ground ginger. You'd be surprised what all goes into making a, uh, a, a sausage. Uh, I'm sorry, a wiener. There's my white pepper. This is my curing salt. Again, this is based off the weight of the meat, how much meat we're using. Cayenne pepper, just a little bit of that. I want a little kick, not much. I will have kids eating this. I got my ground cardamom. This is going in. Or you can already smell that. It smells pretty fragrant. Almost like licorice. We got some coriander. That's going in. Got my paprika. That's going in. And I've got my nutmeg. 
Again, I couldn't find ground mace, so nutmeg it is. Really, I you know, I added some stuff that may not be in traditional uh, wieners. However, this ain't going to be your traditional wiener. Then we're going to go in with some black pepper. I would call that heaping uh, teaspoon. All right, so now here's what we're going to do. It's real easy, guys. It's nothing. I've, I've done nothing you can't do on your own. I haven't even shown you the tools that I'm going to be using. I don't think it's necessary right now. I am. I am going to put this in my fridge overnight. What we're going to do is we're going to let all these seasonings hydrate. And that ensures that we're going to have a much better tasting wiener than if I went and ground this up right now. All right? I want to make sure we're hitting on some pretty big flavors. Um, we're just going to keep moving this around. You see I'm getting everything coated. That's the whole purpose of this. You get everything coated and then let it set. Uh, now, I might not go a whole night with this. I might let it set for a few hours, uh, which is better than not. We're talking about wieners. We're not talking about full-blown sausage here, right? All right, so I'm going to get this mix in. Are you... It smells good already. That, uh, I think that was that cardamom. It's kind of like, uh, kind of smells like black licorice. However, that's not what it tastes like. Smells pretty good already, guys. Smells good. And uh, I could also use this same, uh, this same, this was a, you know, right at six pound chuck roast, right at seven pound chuck roast. I could, I could have made sauces with it, but I think a good hot dog, good solid wiener with a supporting cast of homemade, um, hot dog buns and a homemade nice chili chili dog is, is is really what's calling my name so I, I'm gonna make this over the next two days or so um, nothing really too hard I could do it all in one day however I don't want a bland hot dog all right so let me get this in my fridge and then I'll be back when we are getting ready to ground this see you then All right, so here's what we got going. I got me a pound of ice that I've put in here. That's gonna be my liquid portion for this um, wiener. And we're gonna to get to grinding. You'll see that as I grind, I'm putting ice down the grinder. Again, that is my liquid, my liquid portion. It's gonna get loud, so bear with me. Let's see, let's say grind.
there you have it. We're gonna grind this like another two or three times. Issue being, I only have my big plate. I have no idea what happened to my, I believe it's like a 15 millimeter plate. It's lost, I believe it's lost in a washer or something like that. So we're gonna grind this about two or three more times. Then I may go ahead and get my food processor out and uh, get busy that way because again, we need this way more coarse than it actually is. Again, this fat, these white pieces that you see in here, okay, this is ice, but you see the actual fat. These actually gonna have to bind with the meat. The only way to do that is to get it to a consistency that's like meat, uh, meat mush, if you will, for lack of a better description. All right, so let's start getting this back up here. And an ice also helps keeps the mixture cold. One thing when you're making sausages um, or wieners, everything needs to be cold. Um, the pieces to my um, to my stuffer, my grinder, actually just came out of the freezer. So we're going, it's going to get loud again, guys. I'm going to do this until I don't have to do it anymore, and then I'll bring out my food processor.
Okay, that's grind number two. Our texture is looking a little different. That's what we want. It's more of a mushier texture. We're getting there, but I don't think I'm gonna be able to get the texture I want with this um, with this grinder alone because of my missing smaller diameter plate. So we're gonna we might do this. Uh, actually, you know what? I think I might pull out. Let me see. It's good. Another thing this grinder is doing is all making sure those seasonings that I had coated the meat with, making sure that it's actually getting incorporated with the meat. Now, because we did use um, curing salt as well as kosher salt, um, some of that meat by now should have penetrated um, to the center of those meat pieces. So the salt's working in that way, and then we get in some manual mixing or mechanical mixing from our uh, uh, meat grinder. I might do this one more time with this grinder. And then from there, um, I'm probably going to whoop out, um, I've got my KitchenAid here. I, I, I haven't decided yet. We're going to send it through one more time. All right, let me show you what we have. I'm going to show you how the texture of this meat has changed. See how it's more stringy like? It's all stuck together. You still see some of the fat. Um, and that's due to uh, me not having a small grinder plate. Um, but this batch here is done for my liking. And uh, I've got one more batch to do before we start stuffing casings. Stay tuned. Looks totally different than, than from what it did before. All right, we back. So my total yield, I've got about six hole links and I got two two snubbies so as you can see I've got some air pockets um, in a few of these I'll get these out I'll use a toothpick and prick or you can go and buy a sausage pricker I don't think that's necessary I'll use a toothpick now uh, what I will say is this I realize that the more I make sausage with my actual sausage stuffer um, usually the sausage stuffers that that double as grinders and stuffers aren't necessarily the best to work with so I'm finding that out so here soon I'll probably get me a dedicated sausage stuffer along with a separate uh, grinder alright so here's what we have these are going to sit inside of a, um, inside of my refrigerator overnight and then um, that's gonna help bring these casings together, bind the casings to the meat. However, these are edible casings, but what I'm going to do is I'm using these merely to shape my um, my wieners. So these will sit in the fridge uncovered, and then in the morning I'll get up. I'm going to make my hot dog buns and some chili, and we're going to put this all together. Now, I may do it tomorrow, tomorrow um, or I might do it Monday. These benefit by sitting in the fridge a little bit longer, um, but I'll get these pricked. Then these are going in the fridge. It's a bit late for me here in my edge of Texas, and uh, I'm going to get ready to go to bed. I'll see you guys tomorrow. All right, good morning. Let me show you what we have here, all right? No heat coming from the smoker. Um, this is going to be a true cold smoke. And I can sit here and touch this. There's no heat. The only heat I feel from it is from the sun that's actually out. It's a nice sunny day here. On the 1st of January 2024, let me show you what my... can't even call it a fire looking like. I've got about six to eight charcoal briquettes down there. And I set one of the most densest logs, small logs, I could find. This is going to send produce smoke for the next two, three, four hours, right? And that's what I want. I don't want no heat. All I want is what you see that smoke. Now, let's see what our setup over here. Now, can you see it coming out the smokestack? This is a true cold smoke. I've got my wieners sitting here. These casings are edible. I might take them off. Um, really, I'm just using the casings for the form factor. I might take them off. I might leave them on. I don't know yet. So we've got our uh, wieners. They're going to sit here in cold smoke. This color is going to change. Um, the color... Uh, of these wieners are going to get more red, right? Red or pinkish. Um, the longer they set on here, these casings are permeable, meaning smoke does penetrate. So even if I take these casings off, you will still be able to uh, taste a hint of smoke on the actual wieners. 
So we're gonna get this back down, and I'm gonna let this roll for um, two, three, four, maybe five at the longest hours. Be back then. All right. So these my wieners. I know they look more like sausages, but we got to remember that uh, wieners are forms of sausages, right? And it, uh, depending on where you go around the globe. Um, a lot of wieners look just like sausages. Now, maybe the traditional wiener you're used to having is a bit smaller than this. However, at my neighborhood at Costco or Sam's, they got some thick boys. Um, what I want is for one of the kids or one of the adults to get one of these and not have to come back. So that was my thing in this. And your wiener is as big as your casing. I didn't have any smaller casings, so I went with what I had. Now, these smoked for about four hours. I use a combination of hickory and oak wood. That's where that red color comes in. And again, I'm still not sure if I'm going to keep the casing on. Again, these casings are edible. I am getting ready to go and start a fire, not on my smoker, but on my Weber kettle. I want these to be a bit uh, closer to the fire to finish off. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and put these uh, um, chili cheese dogs together. And my chili is over there on the counter. Uh, I'm sorry, on the stove still simmering. I've got my homemade buns. Got some onions I've chopped up. I've got cheese. I think it's a must. It's imperative that you use mustard now. Anything else is up to you. Uh, but mustard mayonnaise will more than likely be making an appearance. I like mine loaded. Uh, don't know if we're going to use relish or not. Stay tuned. All right, we're gonna go ahead and finish this video out. Let me show you what I have. I have my homemade buns here. I've went ahead and sliced them. I did uh, go ahead and, and, and uh, butter up the sides and got them on a hot plate. You see that? All right, now, so here's what I would like to say about my, my wieners, right? They're still wieners. Uh, next time I do this, I am going to go and find the actual appropriate size casings for the wieners, right? So. I put these on the hot plate so I can char up the skins to make sure that they are crispy. Now, with everything I've got going on this hot dog, I don't think that, that they're going to remain crispy. I also have my homemade chili. Um, the base of this, uh, I already have a chili uh, video on my channel. The base of this, or the difference with this is, I've added ketchup and mustard. Still from scratch though. Um, I think it's absolutely essential when we talk about making a chili dog that mustard be the base of that chili. This, the acidity of it is one of the reasons why I like uh, uh, the chili. So my chili is, if, if you're familiar with Skyline Chili, that's kind of what this is with, with, with a few tweaks to it. I have, you know, like I said, I do have a uh, chili video already on my channel. Um, maybe you know maybe sometime in the near future I might do another one but this was really about the wieners now I've tasted them they taste delicious uh, the texture is a little bit different than you would expect from a sausage so they may look like a sausage but and this is this gives off wiener vibes all the way alright so we're gonna get a little um, cheese down in the middle alright then we're gonna go ahead I'm gonna go Get a little chili in there. Chili's still hot. Then we're gonna shove the wiener in there, guys. Do the same thing on this other one. Now, I, my bake, I'm trying to get my baking skills up to par. I could have made these a bit bigger. And I, really, what should have happened is I, I should have measured my wieners and made my bread based off the size of the wieners. They fit, okay? Um, but for what I picture as a chili dog, they could be a bit bigger because I absolutely load my chili dogs up with um, chili. So it's imperative when you actually make your chili that is not as watery as people might like it when it's by itself. It needs to be a bit thicker than most. All right. Got some raw onion. I believe that's absolutely essential as well. I've got all the different accoutrements, right? That's ketchup, 
course, I've already talked about the mustard. So here's how we're gonna finish this off. All right, I'm making these for my, my in-laws. So I won't be doing a, I won't taste these, but maybe I'll do another one and taste that on camera. All right, so now we're gonna get some chili on it. It's supposed to be messy. It's not supposed to be neat and clean, right? Chili. Chili. Now, I'm used to absolutely drenching these in chili. If you got a good chili, then, you know, uh, the chili is more than half of the experience. But this is a chili dog, so we're not going to skimp. Just these, I'm going to dress them up, get them on a plate so my in-laws can eat these. All right. All right. Okay, so now we're going to go cheese. More cheese. Again, you fix yours how you want yours. And then we're gonna pack on the onions. Okay. All right, now, let me show you what we have. So for me, this would be the basis, actually one more thing. You know, I've sit up here and talked about Mustard. All right, here's what I do. I'll get some mustard on one. To me, mustard is absolutely essential. Here's what we have. You know, let's recap what we've done. Let's recap what we've done. So about two days ago, I bought a six pound uh, chuck roast, I took it, cubed it up, broke it down, seasoned it, put it back in the fridge. Stayed in the fridge overnight to let the, the salt, especially that curing salt, penetrate the meat. Because you want it seasoned down to the bone. One of the worst things you can do is have an underwhelming sausage or, or wiener. We then took it, ground it up, and then I took it and put it in a casing. I've already kind of discussed with you guys a few minutes ago what I would do differently. But I know this is going to be absolutely delicious. I've tasted chili. It's on par with what I like for my chili dogs. Uh, the cheese, the bread, the homemade bread. I did butter it up. Got some Italian uh, sp uh, uh, spices on it with the butter. And here's what we have. I then took the sausage, put it on my smoker. Uh, no heat was used, just straight cold smoke. See, that's one of the that's one of the choices you get to do when you have pink salt. Make sure that when we're in that danger zone, we don't have items like botulism growing. That's what the pink salt does. I then took them, submerged them in the ice bath. They set in my fridge, and they're pretty much cooked. I, I did temp them after the cold smoke. Um, they're pretty much cooked through. Then, uh, about an hour ago, I started a fire on my Weber kettle to finish them off. And here's kind of where we're at. Let me know what do you like on your cheese dog. Have you ever attempted to make your own cheese dog? Now, I fully understand that this, you know, this is three days worth of work. It's really, it's, it, it can be a painstaking process, especially just making your own sausage, a.k.a. wieners. Uh, so I don't expect everyone to do this, but you know what's what's bad about giving it a try. After all, if you, the mission is to get everybody outside in their backyard to cook something. Other than that, if you haven't done so, give this channel a like, share, comment, and subscribe. I appreciate uh, the attention and care you guys have given my channel, and I look forward to making many more videos going here forward. Until next time. The Smokehouse out. All right, we back with another one, y'all. I, ha I had to send my in-laws those other two that I made. So let me show you. We've already gutted out the insides. I've got a nice char with butter on the outsides. We're going to go. I'm going to go a little uh, cheese on the inside of the bun. A little bit more cheese. 
And we're going to take a little chili, put it on the inside of the bun, hot dog buns. All right, chili still got some heat to it. I might put a little onion in there, and I ain't even put the wiener in there yet. So, put my wiener down. It did split on me. I don't mind it though. Now, like I said before, in the in the past, the uh, the past shot I did before this, I'm going to try and find some smaller casings because then it looks like an actual wiener. However. Just want to remind y'all that different parts of the world, wieners are different size, different thicknesses. Yeah, you know, I can go up here to one of my favorite box stores and get some, I think, third pound or quarter pound wieners, right? Um, it tastes like a wiener. That's most important, right? It may look like a sausage. A wiener is a type of sausage, right? So then we're going to shove this in there because now I need to make some real estate. I want to cover this with, uh, with chili and cheese and onions and mustard of course so now I'm gonna go we'll do some some cheese on it like that nothing too hard guys you if you do these I'm not even suggesting that you make your own sausages surely you can make your own uh, chili cheese dogs from all store-bought items um, you do it the way you like and do what your pockets can afford guys this takes a while you know, I'm not gonna lie to you um, let me as I stack this chili on here. Mine's I want mine to be a bit messy, guys. That's how I like my chili dogs. All right, which is gonna absolutely cover it. All right, and then now we're gonna go back with the cheese. Get some more cheese on there, chili cheese dogs. You could even do a melted nacho cheese on these guys. Get that done. We're gonna hit it with some fresh onion. These have been soaking and a bit of water to take the bite off of it of that fresh raw onion not a lot of people like that all right then we're going to finish it off there you have it guys i'm going to get some more shots and then i'll be back to give you guys a taste test stay tuned All right, I told you I'll come back for a taste test. Uh, these are quite big, so I did have to cut mine in half. Show you what it's looking like. Mm. All right. The pop from that casing is awesome. I can taste the different uh, herbs that I use in that cure. The cardamom, the salt, the pepper, um, the nutmeg, they all come through. It's not heavy hitting. It's a background flavor. It's delicious. I, I promise you, the wieners that you get from your store don't taste like this. Typically, most store-bought wieners, because they're doing them in mass, got a very bland flavor. Hence, the reason why we like to put char on them, right? We like to grill them off on the grill or get them over some high heat on our stove and get some color to them. The bread. The bread is soft and supple. Um, I'm getting those Italian herbs. Just a different way. Um, just a different way to do a hot dog bun. Again, this hot dog bun was brioche style. It's got a bit of sweetness to it. I used some sugar in that dough. It's delicious. It comes through. And of course, I got you got the pungentness of that mustard. You can smell it. This smells like a chili cheese dog. Guys, if you haven't tried this before, try making your own or source some of the parts of this from the grocery store and put it together. I promise you. Incorporate your grill or your smoker. Get outside and cook. Until next time.